So, uh, I got this, uh, Triplite UPS for pretty cheap, as you can see, at my local electronics place. But, uh, as you can see, that may have been a mistake because it's plugged in down there and, uh, ain't doing squat. Well, we have a problem. Those are the screw holes and. That should do it. So, let's figure out what's gone wrong. First, I want to see if there's any fuses that have blown. I don't see any. Oh. Huh, check it out. This is kind of cool. This heat, heat sink is actually a lug. Uh, connecting to uh, this transformer, so they said, screw the PCB, we'll just connect the tabs of those components to this lug directly. There's a bunch of covers and big wires heading down there. So this, this choke, you see this choke, is actually going around the main supply. So uh, I think I'm just going to probe what's coming out of there, see if we actually have mains. So those two points down there are um, where the mains come in and I've verified that I have voltage there. Uh, I also hooked up a light bulb across those just to make sure that I have a real connection and it was fine. But I did notice that uh, those two red things down there, those are fuses. And they're closed. Well there's your problem. That thing is dead. Look, I'm putting 19 volts into it. No current. I think it's had it. Fortunately, if I put it in a battery that sort of kind of works, that one's almost dead as well, but at least it has good voltage, it works. There we go. On battery. Let's try hooking something up to it. Alright, I've hooked up this thing here which is a 350 watt um, laminator, so just basically a big heating element on rolls just to serve as a load. This thing is a 500 watt UPS, so it should be able to handle it. I don't expect this battery to last more than a couple seconds, but uh, let's try it out. Alright, we are generating. Let's flip the switch. Yep, well it worked. But then it ran out of batteries, so... Yeah, I didn't like that. Okay, so it looks like it works. Uh, I'll see uh, how much use I can get out of this battery. I got it for nearly free. It came out of an old uh, Razor scooter. You know, those motorized ones? Well, clearly, since it had a battery, it was motorized. So uh, I'll just put this in here, charge it up, and uh, we'll see what happens. The only thing that I wish this thing had is uh, Ethernet surge suppression. It does have, you know, a cable cable surge suppression, um, which is not very useful for me right here in this room because my internet connection is in another room with a wireless router. Um, because that's where the uh, whole house uh, patch panel for the um, Ethernet is. But, uh, I don't know, we can try reconfiguring things, or I might just try ripping this thing out. It's just a single board in there. I don't know if you can see down in there. I don't want to touch this thing now because it's probably charged up. But you see down there, with this green wire, attaching to the board. All that is is ground. All the protection for the phone line uh, and the um, cable is cont self-contained. There's no other connections to that board. So I've undone these little uh, nuts and uh, lock washers. Very easy to, to remove and this thing is now loose. So if I push this, there we go. This thing is ready to go and be installed inside my uh, wiring closet where the cable comes in and uh... 
I'll have to rig up a connection to Earth because the Earth is critically important for how this thing works. So if you're wondering how this thing works, it's actually quite simple. Um, keep in mind that both halves of this thing, so the, uh, the cable part and the uh, phone line part here, are uh, pretty much exactly the same internally. Uh, this one's a bit fancier because of uh, its requirement to deal with radio frequency stuff. But uh, we'll ignore this one for now and we'll just look at the simple one that we can actually you know, see inside of. So the key to all this are these two devices here, these blue ones. Uh, they're called metal oxide varistors and basically they look, they do nothing. They're basically an open circuit at low voltage but as soon as um, the voltage increases above a, a specific threshold specific to each device, um, they become essentially a short circuit. Um, so you can uh, use that to, to help uh, limit the damaging effects of, of surges. So you'll see that this one here I've marked in because that's what it was marked on the uh, back panel. Uh, and if you look, there are two wires coming out of that, um, just because of the, the two wires, you know, to hook up a phone. So there's only two wires used to hook up a, a phone. So the, the power comes in, or the signal comes in through here, and we look, and there's a fuse on each line. If we look at the other side of the fuse, we've got a connection to the other jack. So if you ignore these mobs here, it looks like you just got the two jacks here connected through fuses. Well, we have these mobs, and one end of the, each mob connects to one of the signal on the output side of the fuse. Remember, this, this one right here on the right is the output uh, jack. One end of the mob is connected on the fuse on the output side, and the other end of the mob is connected to ground. See, look, it's kind of hard to see, but one of those legs is, is connected to ground over here. And when there's a voltage that's below the threshold of the MOV, it goes through the fuse, it tries to go through the MOV, but there's you know, too high of a resistance there, so almost nothing goes to ground, and the signal just goes out as normal through the output jack. However, if you have, you know, say, a thousand volts or something like that uh, across your input here, the MOVs short out, and they go to ground. So power goes through here, through the fuse, and straight to ground. Now, that current will tend to be quite high because it's a dead short, uh, so these fuses will blow, therefore disconnecting your output from the input, and therefore your device is protected. Now, I said before that having a ground connection is critically important to having one of these function, and that should be pretty clear because if there wasn't a ground here, well, no current would try to go through the mob, and it could try to short itself out, but nothing will happen because the surge current will just kind of not go through the ground because there isn't one, and go right into your device, which is probably grounded, thereby, thereby frying your device. So that's kind of how it works. Pretty clever. So not much to these things. And incidentally, uh, these mobs are used inside of things like multimeters as well for similar reasons. Um, and actually a very similar circuit. So if you have too high of a voltage on your multimeter, these will blow and um, protect your meter. And uh, oftentimes these fuses won't blow fast enough um, and these mobs will actually explode. So you'll often see them covered with uh, some heat shrink um, just to limit some of the uh, damage caused by exploding mobs. See, so just like that one and that one, uh, this is a power supply that I've been salvaging for parts, so it looks like this power supply actually has a uh, built-in protection against uh, surges, at least to some degree. Although clearly this device doesn't have protection against physical surges, uh, this, this power supply actually uh, I found by the side of the road. Um, it was dropped out of a truck, I guess, so uh, it didn't fare too well, hence its uh, current status as a parts unit. The parts spin with you. So as you can probably guess from the fact that I've moved it to uh, you know, where I have all my cords and things, uh, this thing now works. Even with the half-dead battery in it, it can run my you know, main rig over here for um, you know, at least a minute. I did, decided not, I didn't really care about uh, more than a minute, so I just stopped it. So yeah, cool. Mission complete.